Our second scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. Hear now God's word for us today. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Philip said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. And Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven and earth and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Lord, meet us here in this place. Quiet our minds, open our ears, open our eyes, still our hearts, so that we may know you, see you, hear you, and believe you. May your words be my words this day, in Jesus' name. Amen. So there is something about the stories of Jesus calling his disciples that I, found, that I find so fascinating, so intriguing, and at the same time, so baffling. Each of the gospel writers have an account, and each takes a little different approach to how Jesus called his disciples. But no matter how many times I read the various call stories, there is always something new that stands out, something in particular that draws me in. It is the response to the simple invitation. Jesus says, come. That's usually all that he says. And without hesitation, they go. The same is true with Philip and Nathaniel, who we see in today's reading. One of the reasons why I find the calling of disciples so fascinating is because at this point in time, Jesus hasn't really done anything with his life. We are only in the first chapter of John's gospel and most of the callings happen within the first two or three chapters. And a few days before this encounter, John the Baptist had given testimony to who Jesus was to his followers. And it reads this way, it says, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk he, by him, he exclaimed, look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them, he said to them, what are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. And so they came and they saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day. All the people know about Jesus at this point in time was what they had heard from his cousin John, from John the Baptist, who was the one that had the public ministry, baptizing people and calling for them to repent. He was going about telling others of the one who was to come, the promised Messiah that the world had been waiting for. He was the one the prophets foretold, the prophet who would prepare the way for the Messiah. John had begun to gather a huge following, and people were beginning to wonder if perhaps he might be the long-awaited one. But John was quick to set them straight, saying, I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life for a kingdom life. The real action comes next. The main character in this drama, compared to me, I'm a mere stagehand. He will ignite the kingdom life within you, a fire within you, the Holy Spirit with you, changing you from the inside out. That's what John was saying about Jesus. And so in today's lesson, along comes Jesus, along the shore of the Jordan River. And John tells his followers who Jesus truly is. 
and they immediately go and follow Jesus. So the next day we see Jesus walking along the shore of Galilee. He hasn't done any miracles. He hasn't healed the sick. He really even hasn't spoken a word. And he has a crowd forming. He has begun to create his inner circle of friends simply because an invitation is extended. I am fascinated by their actions and perhaps it's because I know how all of this plays out, right? We, we know how the story ends. We have the advantage of knowing the script, but those men and the other disciples that were to come, all they knew was what John the Baptist had told them. And that was enough for them to take a risk, to leave their livelihood behind, to leave their families and to go. Now, I think I find their actions intriguing because I'm not a huge risk taker. I, I like to know what I'm getting into before I leave my family and my friends and move halfway across the country. I like to have some idea of who I'm following and where they will lead me. I like to have the opportunity to think about the decision, to weigh the pros and cons, and to talk it over with trusted friends. I like to have all the facts and make informed decisions. Anyone else? Maybe, maybe I'm the only one, so it's just me. <laughs> but I think we're all like that, right? To some extent. We like to know what we're getting into before we say yes. But not with the disciples. Not with Philip and Nathaniel, who we find, who we follow today. Jesus found Philip and he said to him, follow me. And Philip did. We don't know much about Philip. We know that he was a friend of Andrew and Peter, who were the first two uh, disciples that Jesus invited into his inner circle. So I'm sure that he had already talked with Andrew and Peter by the time Jesus came to him. And so Jesus says to him, follow me. And, and what did Philip do? He went. He said yes. He didn't ask any questions. No, let me take a minute, make a pros and cons list. Let me, let me lay out to you my conditions of following. Let me lay out to you my expectations for what it means well, to be a follower. No, Philip just went. But Philip, he also went and grabbed a friend to come with him. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found the one whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote about. It's Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. And, and I love Nathaniel's answer, his question. Can anything good come from Nazareth? <laughs> like, you know, that seems like kind of a snooty thing to say. But, but Philip, Philip's response is like, well, come and see. I, d I don't know the answer, but come and see. Come and see what I have found. And so Nathaniel, with great curiosity, does just that. He gets up from his place beneath a tree, and he goes to see just what, or rather who, Philip is so excited about. And we're told when Jesus saw him, when he saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Jesus knew who he was, knew the heart of Nathanael, knew what he was thinking and was able to with just a few words capture his heart and nathaniel asked him he's like where did you get to know me haven't you ever done that before like do i know you from somewhere or someone says oh i know who you are where where did you get to know me and jesus answered i saw you under the fig tree before philip called you and Nathaniel's response, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And again, Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? <laughs> you will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. Jesus' invitation was simple. Come and see. Jesus didn't promise fame or fortune. He didn't guarantee a better life. He didn't offer anything really except to come along and see for themselves what it is they had heard. 
and they went. They answered the call without hesitation, without condition, without question. One minute they were minding their own business. You know, Philip was hanging out. Nathaniel was reading, probably reading, reading the gospel or praying, not the gospel, reading scriptures or praying under a fig tree, minding their own business. And the next day, they're followers of Jesus. They've been invited into his inner circle with no idea of what was to come. That didn't matter in the moment, with no thought about what they were leaving behind, only seeing what was ahead. With no regret or hesitation, they said yes, and they didn't look back. And that got me to thinking about how quickly those men said yes to the invitation to come with Jesus. There wasn't a guarantee. In fact, we know how this journey ends. No fortune, no fame, no better life. Well, except for life on the other end, right? The best life there is. But their earthly life was not easy. And many of Jesus' disciples died horrible deaths, all because they were willing to answer the call no matter what. Willing to see the adventure that awaited them, watch with expectation all the way to the cross and beyond. As I have continued to wrestle with their unbelievable sacrifices, I still wonder why they said yes. Why they took a, took a risk, leaped at the opportunity, and left everything behind. I wonder, was it curiosity that motivated them? For, it may have been, for Jesus answered Nathaniel's questions with an invitation. Come and see for yourself. Was it adventure-seeking? Were they tired of the same thing day after day and ready for a change? Were they simply at the right place at the right time, ready to change the world, ready to lead a revolution? Their hearts were open to hear God's call. Their minds were primed to say yes when asked. Their feet were ready to walk where they were led. Their spirits were willing to come along for the journey. Their eyes were open to see all that can be seen. And their lives were changed with two words, come and see. Which brings to mind a question, well, actually two questions. How would I respond to such an invitation? But the real question is rather, how have we responded to such an invitation? Because we're all invited. We're all called to be disciples, as the kids told us. You need to believe in Jesus. You need to follow God's word. You need to be compassionate. That one's a little bit trickier, but not impossible. <laughs> what are we willing to leave behind to answer the call? For Philip and Nathaniel that day, it was truly everything. We don't know much about who they were, they were most likely fishermen, as we know Philip was a friend of Andrew and Peter, who were fishermen. He was hanging out in Galilee, which is a fishing town. But what we do know, like all of the disciples, they left their business, their financial security, their jobs, their home, their family, their community, all that they knew. Jesus extended an invitation, and without hesitation, they followed. Without knowing what was involved, in following, they went. Without clear direction on exactly where they were going, even where they would sleep, what they would eat, where they would end up, they followed. Without knowing much about the man who extended an invitation, they gave up everything. Friends, we too are recipients of an invitation. An invitation to come and see. The difference is, we know who it is that is asking us to come. We know ultimately where following Jesus will take us. There are still unknown factors yet to be seen, but we know the person who says come, and we can trust wholeheartedly as we follow. Following comes at a cost. What are you willing to give up to truly follow? What might you be holding on to that is keeping you from saying yes without hesitation? Jesus said to Nathanael that he saw him before Philip invited him to come and see. And Nathanael's reply, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. 
his testimony of the greatness of Jesus before he has even seen one miracle, heard one teaching, experienced the breath of who Jesus was. All put aside. All because he was seen. I love Jesus' answer to his declaration. He says, do you believe because I told you that I saw you? You will see greater things. And that's a promise. Jesus' invitation to come and see is so much more than Nathaniel and Philip could even begin to imagine. Jesus offered an invitation to Philip as he walked along the seashore, come and follow, and he said yes. Philip extended an invitation to Nathaniel and said, come and see, and Nathaniel went to see. And Jesus then offered an invitation to Nathaniel. There is so much more to see. I have so much more to show you. Come. And he said, yes. Come and see. It is that simple. As followers, we are invited into this adventure to come and see for ourselves all that God has in store for us. To follow with eyes open in wonder to see God's goodness. To come with eyes open to see and experience God's mercy, grace, and love in action. To invite others to join us in the journey for them to come and see. May our response be like that of Philip and Nathaniel. They didn't ask questions, but simply said yes to the adventure that awaited. Friends, come and see. Amen. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as together we 